A wolf's head trailing fire, black leather jackets, powerful motorbikes, militant behavior. Tough guys and their machines decorated with Russian and Soviet flags and a club president who in Russia enjoys superstar status. The Night Wolves are far and away the biggest biker group in Russia. Its 5,000 members are spread nationwide over 50 branches, or chapters. The Night Wolves are loyal to the Kremlin, ultra-Orthodox and convinced patriots. Their president is Alexander Saldostanov, the surgeon, as he's known, is a close friend of the Russian president. It was a great honor for me to be introduced to Putin. And I am also honored to be regarded as his friend. I can justifiably claim to be his friend, because when we were in the Crimea together, I saw this special look in his eyes. The Night Wolves definitely enjoy political influence in Russia. The bikers make their presence felt in the Crimea and on the Black Sea coast, together with Vladimir Putin. I was born in the Ukraine, grew up in the Crimea and now live in Moscow. It is all one country and, in my opinion, must be kept together. Outwardly, the night wolves like to present themselves as peaceful motorcycling enthusiasts. But experts know that the club is a paramilitary organization. In the Crimea, the Night Walls interfere with private military security firms, around 500 in recent years, and take over their business by force. Who exactly are the Night Wolves, and what do they really want? We've come to Moscow, the Russian capital, to visit the home base of the biggest biker group in the country. It's late April. The clubhouse is located in the west of Moscow. The bikers are celebrating the start of the motorcycling season. It's a major event. Hundreds of Night Wolves members are expected. The program has been tightly organized bike shows, a motorcycle parade through the streets of the Russian capital, and concerts, all with the blessing of the Russian government and under police protection. In Germany, this would be unthinkable. But what has made the Night Wolves so big and influential? We've come to meet club president Alexander Saldostanov, known as The Surgeon, in his garage on Clubland. It's a large corrugated iron shed, crammed with bikes of all kinds. Vehicles for the Night Wolves' lavish motorcycle shows. The Night Wolves have played a key role in the history of the motorcycle movement. We have continuously defended our authority and our goals ever since we were established 26 years ago. The surgeon proudly showed us his collection of old military machines and fantasy bikes, bizarre self-built models that are threatening and intimidating. This one is made entirely from metal. You really can ride it. It's a model from the stories we use in our shows. One of them, which we present for children, ends with this wolf appearing on stage as the savior of the world. This creation is unique, a masterpiece that would win first prize at any exhibition. It's the motorbike of evil in our stories. Made of metal, it was built entirely by hand. This motorcycle can get angry. It spits fire and smoke and can change the color of its eyes. That's how it shows its feelings. Final preparations for the motorcycle parade through Moscow. 54-year-old Viktor Keller is the boss of the Kaliningrad Night Wolves and a leading figure in the group as a whole. He claims to be an entrepreneur in the oil business, but wasn't prepared to go into detail. You can't compare us with a motorcycle club in the West. They're all lawless. 
But we're not. Our president, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, is a self-assured person and would never enter into such a friendship with any other club. That is a great honor for us, one it seems that we have earned. This friendship exists because we have done something for our country. And we will continue to serve Russia, irrespective of our relationship with the president. But are the night wolves really as harmless as their boss tries to make out? In a few hours' time, the biker group's home base will be teeming with members. Putin's bikers are waiting for the go-ahead for their traditional motorcycle parade through the Russian capital. I wouldn't say that the government gives us total freedom. The fact is that at present we have a government which is active abroad. It takes patriotic action and we are patriots. We are working in the same direction and have the same goal. There are areas where the government helps us and areas where we help the government. And that's a good thing. But our biker group had a patriotic ideology even before we established relations with the government. Club president Alexander Saldostanov is the biker's undisputed star. He loves the big stage and media appearances. Pictures of Sebastopol in the Crimea. This is where the biker's leader was born. It's also where the Night Wolves have staged several major shows. The last one was in 2014, following annexation of the Ukrainian peninsula by Russia. It was characterized by lots of pathos, hero worship and patriotism. The guest of honor in the audience was Russian President Vladimir Putin. Saldostanov is a media professional and knows how to capture the limelight by placing a wreath, for example, at the tomb of the unknown warrior in Moscow. Wherever Russia demonstrates nationalism and patriotism, the biker's boss is in the front row. Patriotism is like the word love. Words cannot describe the extent of our patriotism. For me, it is first and foremost a love of the fatherland. Russia is like a being with its own soul. It is a living creature, one I, too, feel a close bond with, and one which has a great influence on me. If Russia is ailing, I ail as well. If Russia is flourishing, I, too, flourish. The Night Wolves like to present themselves as peaceable motorcyclists, but is this fact or fiction? We decided to find out more about the Night Wolves. A remote railway station in the north of Moscow, we've come to meet Sergei Kanev, a journalist and expert on organized crime. He's also investigated the Night Wolves world and, as a result of his research, has even been threatened by the bikers. We can only speculate on the Night Wolves' contact with organized crime. The surgeon is the managing director of a security firm, so for this reason alone he must have numerous contacts with all kinds of authorities and public offices and criminal circles. You can tell this from the way the Night Wolves present themselves. This is clear that many of the Night Wolves come from the police force and some have even committed crimes like assault. Words that cast the bikers in a different light when we put those claims to the Night Wolves, they dismissed them as lies and propaganda dreamt up by a liberal press hostile to Russia. 
We are not a criminal organization, nor will we ever be. Do you really think the Russian government would cooperate with a criminal organization? That's nonsense, of course. Foreign newspapers once reported that shady dealings take place on club premises. So journalists paid us a visit and spoke to the club's president. They had a look around but didn't find anything. They saw that we're a charitable organization that supports lots of projects. So what is being claimed is absolute rubbish. His explanation is not very convincing. Founded in 1989, shortly before the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Night Wolves are the oldest motorcycling club in Russia. The bikers are regarded as nationalist, arch-conservative and totally loyal to the Kremlin. Alexander Saldostanov likes to be near to President Vladimir Putin and he is happy to be seen with the bikers' leader. Take this meeting on the Black Sea, for example. Alexander Saldostanov benefits from his contacts in the Kremlin. It enables him to constantly extend his influence. In 2013, he was even awarded a medal, presented personally by Vladimir Putin himself, for the patriotic education of Russia's youth. In the Crimea, the surgeon campaigned for Putin and for Russia. But the freedom-loving people of the Crimea don't trust politicians and they rejected his efforts. They did not understand why he was doing that for Putin. Saldo Stanov also intervened in operations in the Ukraine. The Night Wolves meddled with private security firms in the Crimea and took over their businesses by force. Last year, it is said, 500 companies were affected by this. And it wouldn't surprise me if numerous security firms are soon active in the Crimea. Companies linked in some way or another to the Night Wolves. In Russia, Alexander Saldostanov is seen as an active businessman who has firm control of his Night Wolves. The biker's boss can count on the absolute support of his members. And his closeness with the Russian president is not a problem for the members of the Night Wolves. On the contrary, they all revere a ruler who's such a controversial figure in Europe. I am proud of our relationship with President Putin. What kind of club must we be if even the president pays attention to us? But I know that we've earned this honor. We don't have any preferences. This is a club a collective of kindred spirits. We are all relatively similar people with the same interests. And as a club, we support what the government and the president are doing right now. And if we didn't like it, we'd say so. That is our way of expressing our opinion as citizens of Russia. The club has a long history. We have existed since Soviet Union days, and the club has always had its political views. I am a Russian patriot. I love my country. I love Mother Russia. And I don't like what Russia's enemies are doing in NATO and the international secret services, which casts our country in such a bad light and wants to do such evil things to us. Russian human rights activist Leonid Nikitinsky knows another reason for the Kremlin's relations with the biker's boss. Both President Putin and the president of the Night Wolves are power seekers and stand for machismo, and this similarity between them creates a bond. The surgeon profits from his relationship with Putin, and through it Putin tries to build up his image. But I don't think the two have any other personal bond. 
In Germany, the biker gang is a highly controversial group, especially after members appeared in the Crimea and set up camp there. As pro-Russian vigilantes, they manned checkpoints and guarded government buildings. The Night Wolves have also been active in the eastern Ukraine. They're even said to have acted as a kind of paramilitary unit and taken part in the fighting. Members of the Night Wolves are still in the eastern Ukraine today. Volker Beck is the Green Party's parliamentary spokesperson on domestic affairs. He sees the Night Wolves' paramilitary activities directed quite clearly against international understanding in Europe. The Night Wolves have attracted a lot of attention through their actions in the eastern Ukraine, where they have even policed the civilian population. In doing so, they assumed state authority and thus attacked the political integrity of the Ukraine. The Night Wolves must thus be seen as an ultra-nationalistic and aggressive group, one that cannot be regarded as part of the democratic spectrum of a country. When we confronted the leader of the Night Wolves with this criticism, we were met with a testy and evasive response to our question. Absolutely bullshit. Absolute bullshit. There is no way we in Russia can be nationalists. It's even genetically impossible. That all comes from abroad. Russia is a multicultural country. I myself have many kinds of blood in my veins. Russia is made up of numerous nations that have always lived in peace with one another. Treading a nationalistic path would be ruinous for Russia. Nationalism cannot exist in Russia because Russia is a unique example of an empire that has never exploited its colonies, but has always invested in them. Russia has been the savior of many smaller nations, which would otherwise have disappeared long ago. But within Russia, they have thrived. Leonid Nikitinsky has also focused on the role of the bikers in the Ukraine. He confirms that the group played a paramilitary role there and policed the local populace. I think that... I believe that the Crimea and the Donbass must be assessed separately. The same night walls were not active in both areas. We're talking about two different groups. Many night walls travelled to the Crimea because they used to go there in the past and always got on well with the local population. The group consisted of both Russian and Ukrainian night walls. They also travelled to the Crimea during the annexation and occupied key positions there. It was a different group of night wolves who went to the Donbass, the nutcases, the adrenaline junkies who need war and want to wage it. They went there to play a military role. Those bikers see Russia as a world power. But lots of other Russians also went there out of the same conviction. The Night Wolves merged with them and fought alongside them. The Night Wolves deny any direct military involvement in the Ukraine conflict, but they do admit to having engaged in policing activities, allegedly to prevent an outbreak of hostilities. Let me tell you a story. We stopped the Ukrainian Deputy Minister of Defence. In his briefcase, he had a declaration on opening fire. We refused to let him continue on to his destination. Instead, we took the declaration off him and sent him back. Had the declaration reached its destination, the Ukrainian armed forces would have received the order to open fire. And that would have had serious consequences. Coming up next, free passage through Moscow for Putin's bikers. The Night Wolves embark on their traditional motorcycle parade through the Russian capital. And some bikers head for Berlin. They want to follow in the footsteps of the Red Army in the Second World War, but they meet with resistance. 
The Night Wolves are the biggest and most powerful motorcycle club in Russia. The bikers are regarded as nationalistic and totally loyal to the Kremlin. In a paramilitary role, these controversial rockers even intervened in the Ukraine conflict, setting up roadblocks and policing the civilian population. The Night Wolves' headquarters in the west of Moscow, hundreds of bikers are opening the official motorcycling season with a parade through Moscow. It's a demonstration of their strength. With the backing and protection of the police, it means virtually free passage for Russia's biggest biker group. Naturally, no other club in the country enjoys such privileges. Rivalries do exist amongst the biker clubs. Perhaps some take a different view of our successes. But that's childish. No one even comes close to our history, our fame, and what we have achieved. Everyone here knows that. The Night Wolves have played a crucial role in the history of the motorcycle movement. We were the first bikers and we have defended our authority and our goals ever since we became established 26 years ago, when the name Night Wolves first appeared on our jackets. The first stop on their ride through Moscow takes the bikers to a ceremonial square. It's a special moment because Alexander Saldostanov is going to make an important announcement. But first, the head of the bikers is given an award. Together with veterans, dignitaries and police leaders, he's once again honoured for his efforts for Russia. This is followed by the actual highlight of the event a parade of those Night Wolves members who will be setting out on a trip from Moscow to Berlin. The purpose of the 3,000-kilometer trip is to retrace the Red Army's route to Berlin in the Second World War and to draw attention to an alleged distortion of history by the West. The West is trying to rewrite history. They are peeved that this has no effect on us and that we refuse to forget the war and our soldiers. They are making every effort to interchange the culprits and the heroes in order to paint veterans as fascists and put Hitler and Stalin on the same level. It is the attempt to diminish the importance of our victory. So we just have to protest. The first leg of the trip was supposed to take the bikers from Moscow through Belarus and on to Warsaw, but the Poles refused to let the bikers into their country. The Night Wolves operation went ahead in the face of international protest. That is why it caused great concern, especially in Poland. What is annoying is that the Night Wolves project diverted attention away from important issues concerning the relationship between Germany and Russia and the need for Russian prisoners of war to be rehabilitated and compensated. Only a few Night Wolves managed to enter the European Union via Slovakia. In Vienna, they were received by the Russian embassy and laid a wreath at the Red Army monument. They crossed the Bavarian border into Germany their goal, Berlin. At the Soviet monument, they plan to commemorate the capitulation of Nazi Germany as the culmination of their so-called victory tour. Of the 30 or so members who started out from Moscow, only a handful reached Berlin. The majority were refused entry into Europe. In the run-up to the trip, the bikers' leaders had already been denied visas to enter Germany. I personally advised the Federal Ministry of the Interior and the Foreign Office not to issue visas for these people to visit Germany and the other Schengen states during the period in question. 
zu erteilen. Die konkreten Äußerungen, die Concrete statements and actions prior to the commemorative march plainly indicated that the night wolves have an ultranationalistic agenda. That raised concerns because we want to strike a peaceful balance with the peoples of Europe. The night wolves threatened this peaceful balance, especially when they questioned the sovereignty and the integrity of the Ukraine. Back in Moscow, the bikers are on their way to church. Besides being patriots and loyal to the Kremlin, above all, the members of the night wolves are fanatical disciples of the Christian Orthodox faith. Every year, club president Saldostanov has himself and high-ranking members of the Night Wolves blessed by a priest. The Night Wolves see themselves as an elite, a kind of modern-day order of knights. Nearly every member is an ultra-Orthodox Christian. The Orthodox Church enjoys enormous influence in Russia, and so the support they receive from church dignitaries is almost more important to the night wolves than their closeness to Vladimir Putin. As for the priests, they like to be seen in the company of the militant bikers. Fortunately, orthodox values are the very foundation of our club. It is no secret that we often go to church and receive advice from priests. We try to coordinate our efforts with the church. By this, I mean our numerous projects and trips. There can be nothing bad where God and the church are present. We are certain that God holds his protecting hand over us. God God and Putin for Russia. With this attitude, there's no way that the members of the biker gang could be seen as outsiders. Around three quarters of the Russian population back Vladimir Putin. They feel threatened by the United States and Europe. Ever since the West imposed economic sanctions, the people of Russia have been even more supportive of their president. For that reason, with its loyalty to the Kremlin, the biker group is also highly thought of. The night wolves are good lads as long as they behave correctly, don't disturb public order, help people to live peacefully together and carry out their operations, like in the Crimea, for example. This notion that bikers are no different from gangsters comes, I believe, from America, where in the 80s and 90s there really was a problem with criminal bikers. But here in Russia, bikers do not pose a threat. They are a collective with common interests. They are no more dangerous than tipsy youngsters after a school graduation ball. If they sell drugs, pedestrians can also be criminals. Then it makes no difference if you're on foot, in a bus or on a motorbike. Sympathy is also generated by events like this. Footage from February 2015. 35,000 people gathered in Moscow for an anti-Maidan demonstration. The counter-movement, in other words, to the demonstrations in Kiev. One of the main activists was the leader of the Night Wolves, Alexander Saldostanov. He marched in the front row of the demonstrators, shouting out anti-Western rallying cries. Where is Europe? Where is America with its democracy? We don't want that kind of democracy. We have to protect our freedom from American democracy. Let them implement their Maidan in Washington. 
These pictures show that the event was intended to demonstrate Russian strength and resolve and was directed against the West, developing closer relations with the Ukraine. Putin was fated as a star. For most of the demonstrators, responsibility for the conflict with the West lies with Russia's arch enemy, the United States. There are now hundreds of thousands of us, and we will not leave our cities in the lurch. I have seen how the Maidan raped the Ukraine. There are no comparable examples in history of other empires mistreating their colonies the way the United States abuses the entire world today. I am capable of analyzing for myself what happened at the Maidan. On the basis of my own thoughts on the history of Russia and the whole world, and not on the basis of what is written in the press. On no account must we permit the weapon that is the organized chaos of the Maidan to spread again in our country. Because its effect can be compared to that of an atom bomb. According to media critical of the Kremlin, pressure was exerted in factories and schools for people to take part. The Russian opposition even described the event as an attempt at intimidation designed to warn the population of the bloody consequences of a change of power in the Kremlin. Here too, the night walls were used for propaganda purposes. Many of the demonstrators, it is claimed, were hired to participate and paid afterwards. Members of the night walls were also involved in protecting the demonstration. They belonged to the security company owned by Alexander Saldostanov. For experts, further indication that the night wolves are involved in shady dealings. The night wolves' money comes, on the one hand, from the Kremlin, within the framework of the anti-Maidan campaigns. It provides funding for their festivals, demonstrations and bike shows. Another source of finance is the security business. And this seems highly illegal to me, because I learned in the Crimea that the surgeon and the night wolves extorted protection money from security firms there. After the break, we visit the Night Wolves headquarters in Moscow to see how the bikers wrap up the start to the motorcycle season with concerts and an extremely bizarre appearance. The Night Wolves, Russia's rockers, are arch-conservative and ultra-Orthodox Christians. With political appearances, like at this anti-Maidan demonstration, they support Russian claims to power in the Crimea and the eastern Ukraine. We tried long and hard to talk to other biker clubs, but none of them wanted to comment on the night wolves. Only these independent motorcyclists were prepared to speak to us. They too showed clear respect for the biggest and most powerful biker group in Russia. Even so, they told us a story about the conflict with a motorcycle club called Dri Dalogi, which means three streets. One of their members, who it seems, got into a dispute with 40 night wolves. I know that small, new motorcycle clubs need the permission of one of the big gangs, like the Night Wolves, in order to become established. If they receive this permission, they automatically become supporters of the Night Wolves. But if someone attempts to get out, they can be put under tremendous pressure. That was the case, for instance, with bikers in the Tridorogi club. 
I can't say exactly what took place, but I don't know of any club after the Tridorogi that tried, as a supporter of the Night Walls, to pull out. The other bikers were also unwilling to provide details of the incident involving the Tridorogi club, out of fear of revenge, perhaps? All we got were illusions. As sad as it sounds, no free biker wants to have anything to do with the night wolves. That's because contacts with them in the recent past have been extremely unpleasant. Like the incident with the Tri Darogi, for instance. We wanted to know more. Sergei Kanev carried out research on the spot and confirmed the disputes. The Night Wolves are said to have attacked members of the rival Dri Darogi Motorcycle Club. The surgeon and the Night Wolves want to have all Russian bikers under their control. But the Tridorogi were not prepared to accept that. The Night Wolves forced the Tridorogi into a garage. Shots were fired and some of the Night Wolves were hit. The members of the Tridorogi had to fight for their lives. The ensuing court case saw the Tridorogi gunman given a prison sentence. But the night wolves who were involved got off scot-free. Apparently, it was not possible to prove that they had attacked the rival bikers. The final stage of the Night Wolves parade through Moscow. The bikers are heading back to the club's headquarters, where the day will end with a big party. Impressions of the day are divided. There were no incidents with the police or other biker clubs, but when it comes to self-presentation, the Night Wolves enjoy an astonishing amount of freedom in Russia. Viktor Keller sums up the day. He's highly satisfied with the Night Wolves' demonstration of power. We are all free. We are strong. We live in a free Russia. The mood is good. And we were out on our motorcycles. Today we lived out our tradition. We rode around together. Nearly every biker in Moscow turned up. We visited places in Moscow that are important to the night walls. That is what we got up to today. Meanwhile, the party's in full swing. During the night, the bikers will demonstrate their main ideological principles once again, patriotism and loyalty to the Kremlin and the Christian Orthodox faith. As is so often the case in modern-day Russian state ideology, it's a crude mix of seemingly incompatible elements. We make one last attempt to find out what the Night Wolves really think about Russia and the conflict in the Ukraine. You know, Vladimir Putin feels the same way as we do about our fatherland, our homeland. They call us Putin's bikers because it is easy for pro-Western, pro-American propaganda to describe us like that. Alliances like NATO want to put pressure on us. That's exactly the way it is. Putin came to us. We didn't go to him. The Night Wolf show is lavish and structured with total precision. Nothing is left to chance. According to media reports, the Kremlin supports the Night Wolves to the tune of around 2 million euros a year. In return, the bikers take every opportunity to demonstrate patriotism and loyalty to the Kremlin. Next up is an extremely bizarre performance. The Night Wolves have declared their solidarity not only with Russian President Vladimir Putin, but also with the Russian Orthodox Church. And church representatives like to show their appreciation with appearances like this.
I can tell you quite frankly that these people fascinated me. Unfortunately, there are not enough real men in our country. But these people are real men. There can be absolutely no doubt about that. First and foremost, because they stand by their religion and the Russian Orthodox Church. In the concluding highlight of the event, a Night Wolves member from Kiev is presented. He was detained for a long time and we tried for just as long to free him. Together, we succeeded. He's a real hero for us. The man, it seems, was arrested by Ukrainian security forces. It's not clear why, nor how the rescue operation was handled. But the message of the presentation is clear. The night wolves are trying to sow discord. After all, with regard to the border between the Ukraine and the Russian Federation, they have questioned the peace order in Europe by taking part in the confrontation in the eastern Ukraine. That is bad because after the 8th of May 1945, we wanted to ensure that weapons in Europe remain silent. We introduced a process of reconciliation between former wartime opponents, and this has also proved successful within the European Union. We must do everything possible to reach peace and understanding with the peoples of the former Soviet Union as well and find peaceful solutions to the problems we face. The Night Wolves are the biggest and most powerful biker group in Russia. Known as the Surgeon, its president, Alexander Saldostanov, is the undisputed leader of the bikers and a man who wields tremendous influence in Russia. He and his members make no bones about their closeness to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The Night Wolves support separatists in the Crimea and in the eastern Ukraine. They're in the front line at nationalist demonstrations and display their radical views openly. Insiders believe that the club is also involved in shady dealings and criminal activities. Putin's bikers are militant ambassadors of the Kremlin, radical, patriotic and, above all, extremely shadowy.